folks, I think we're going to get started. We're going to do our best to speak really loudly and hopefully you can all hear. We put in an order for the wind to cooperate today and so far so good. But welcome to the Town of Clarkdale's Verde River at Clarkdale Lower Tapco River Access Point Dedication Ceremony. My name is Yahoo! I hope you brought water shoes and you can get in the river when we're done. We came out this morning, we already had a fisherman in the river, so it was great. My name is Gail Mabry, I'm the town manager here in Clarkdale, and I have the distinct honor to do the welcome and introductions this morning, and then introduce some of our speakers along the way. Hope you all got a program and have one of our pamphlets, and I'll try to be brief because our other speakers get more time than I get. First, I wanted to just acknowledge some of the elected officials that have joined us today. I hope that I have everyone marked down. I was trying to see as you got here. Obviously, we've got some Clarkdale Town Council members. Our mayor, Doug Von Gossick, is here, and he'll be speaking to you a little bit later. Our vice mayor, Richard Daynert. Uh, Supervisor Chip Davis, I thought I saw him here hiding in the back. Thank you for being here. And mayor Diane Jones, I know I saw her arrive. Thank you for being here, Mayor. Um, we've also got some representation from Yavapai College. James Perry, the dean of the campus, is here with us today. And we've got a number of our Clarkdale Parks and Recreation Commissioners who we're really pleased to have with us. Linda Zanoli is our chair. Linda, can you raise your hand? Barbara Van Wy is our vice chair. And Barbara's here somewhere. Pete Curie is here. And, Lin and Debbie Picard. Thank you all for being here. We've also, you know, this project, and the mayor's going to talk a lot about how we got to where we are, but we've got some great partners that have worked with us. First and foremost, Freeport, McMoran, Copper and Gold. Robert Quintanar is here, and he's going to say a few words to us a little bit later. But Freeport, McMoran is the property owner here, and has leased this property to the town of Clarkdale for a whopping $10 per year. So we, were man we managed to get that. We managed to get that in the line item in the budget, so um, we're really grateful for their support, and I know the mayor's gonna talk a little bit more about just how we got to this site and how much we appreciate that. Um, I mentioned Supervisor Chip Davis. We've got some other folks here from Yavapai County who've been really instrumental in helping us get the site developed, and Van Parsons is here with the Yavapai County Community Service Crew from Adult Probation. They were one of the first partners that we got here on site and helped us install a fence along the whole perimeter of Sycamore Canyon Road. They've been great partners and I know they're going to continue to be so we really appreciate them being here today. Um, and actually the Yelpai County Public Works Department, I'm not sure that we have any representation from them yet, but they worked with us on getting some road permitting done. And Supervisor Davis, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, but I know that he has requested that Sycamore Canyon Road improvements be added to the county's five-year plan so we may see a day where we've got some chip sale out to this site and beyond for the residents out in Sycamore Canyon. The Clarkdale Fire District I don't think was able to be here but they've been great partners for us as well doing emergency management planning with us on the river. There's a lot to consider when you put more people on this stretch of river between Tapco and Tuzigoot. And the fire district and our police department have been great partners in planning for safety on the river. And then we've got some folks from Arizona State Parks here, Max Castillo and George Christensen. Wave your hands, Max. George is back there. Um, these. These two individuals, along with others at State Parks, have been really great partners. Our, we'd like to call it our sister park down at Tuzigoot, really are the two anchor parks for us here in Clarkdale, one on the upper end and one on the lower, so that folks can float the river from here down to Tuzigoot. Uh, the town of Clarkdale has an intergovernmental agreement with Arizona State Parks, and that sounds great, but what really makes that work is at the operational level, um, and Max and George are really uh, integral part of doing that. So we're really pleased to have them here and to be working with them down at Tuzigoot and on other projects. We also have a whole bunch of people, and I'm not going to name them all, that are involved in the um, Verde Front process. This is a group of leaders from agencies all through the Verde Valley that are looking at um, 
not only river access and river recreation, but also trails and upland recreation in the Verde Valley. Folks from the National Park Service, Prescott National Forest, Coconino National Forest, Arizona Game and Fish, the Nature Conservancy, I know Heather's here today, have all been working really hard together to come up with a plan to promote river recreation and other outdoor recreation in the Verde Valley. So we're pleased to have everybody here. And then finally, yes, finally, I want to recognize my town of Clarkdale team. This has been a great, a huge undertaking, and it has taken, it has taken a village to raise this park. And I don't want to miss the opportunity to recognize them individually, so bear with me. We have, every department in our town has been involved in this project starting with the Public Works Department that's been here on site, on the ground. Our Public Works Director, Wayne Dabrowski, is here. Our Public Works Superintendent, Art DeRazzo, is right in the back there. Our Clarkdale Town crew has just worked their tails off on this site for the last, really since February and really in this last month. So I saw El Pedio peek around the corner back there. I know El Pedio Wrangles back here. Chris Levis is back there. Our Tim Wakefield, is Tim back here somewhere? Kevin Adams is another crew member and Benson Yazi. All of these guys have been really working hard to get this ready. And their co counterparts on the utilities crew didn't work as much on this site. But while all the public works guys were here, the utility guys were covering on the public works side in Clarkdale. So Mick McCullough, Greg Gardeman, Terry Norman, Jeff Ray, and Joel Chamberlain, we owe a big thanks to them as well. So give them a round of applause. Our community and economic development director is Jody Filardo. And the team in her department has been instrumental as well. Vicki McReynolds and Paul Grosso work in that department. And then the two staff members that work with Jody that have worked the most on this project are Beth Escobar, who has been managing a lot of our master planning processes on both sites. And then Gus Espelt, Gus, wave at everybody. Gus has been spending a tremendous amount of time developing signage, graphics, when you leave, I hope you'll take the chance to stop and look at the kiosk sign at the entrance. Gus helped design all of that, and it's really beautiful. He's, he's also our video guy and, and just does great things for the town, so thank you, Gus. Janet Perry is our community super services supervisor and photographer for the day. Parks and Recreation falls under Janet's department, and Don Norman is our supervisor in that department, so she's... Joni Westcott isn't here. Somebody has to run the shop back there, but those three have been working hard on this project as well. And our finance department, you know, you don't get this done without having the finance people right on it. So Kathy Bainbridge couldn't be here today. Kathy is a river guru, and so she's great not only on the finance end, but she's, she knows what's going on on the river and has great input that way. Kathy Schwick is here somewhere in the back. Thank you, Kathy. They keep us on task on the finance end. And then the Clarkdale Police Department. Chief Randy Taylor is here. And the police department's been on the ball since February when we first got this site. They've been out keeping a presence, keeping an eye on things. Now this is going to get challenging. But one, in addition to just the public safety role, one of the most important roles that the police department has now taken on is to supervise the Verde River Ambassador Program. Sergeant Bill Relier is with us. Bill is going to be supervising our ambassadors. And we actually do, you all probably met Jim Bruno when you drove in. He's wearing a Clarkdale Ambassador shirt. We also have a couple of other ambassadors here today. Elaine, I see her wearing her shirt in the back. And Cindy Masters is over here. We actually have seven Verde River ambassadors that we've hired so far. These folks are gonna be instrumental to what we're trying to do at this site and helping people enjoy the river, protecting the stewardship, providing stewardship for the site and really being our 
feet on the ground to help people really appreciate it. So we're happy to have them on board and they started their first shift today. And that is my list for right now. I would now like to introduce Hazel Sayo from the Yavapai Apache Nation. She's going to offer a blessing today as we start this ceremony. Hazel, can you come up? You can stand right here or wherever you're comfortable. You can just sit. Our prayers are always heard no matter what position you're in. Loving Creator, Universal Healer of Spirit, Heart, and Soul, hear my prayer, for I am weak sometimes. I thank you for the birth of this new day. I thank you for the gift of my family, my friends, and all those who surround me. I give thanks for all that you have created for me, big and small, magnificent, and seemingly insignificant in my eyes. I ask for my sister that you quiet their minds so that they may listen with their hearts to all your sacred teachings. And I humbly ask also that you mirror back to each and every one present here their own individual sacredness and beauty. I ask also for this land where my ancestors walked I ask that it be kept sacred, and for those who are going to use it, may they remember their sacredness and their own individual beauty and not pollute it. Because there are things that live in these waters, it is their home, so that they respect that also and keep the waters clean so that they can use it and the things that live there may live there in peace also. I give thanks for this sacred land that you gave us and in your love and wisdom you created this river for us so that we may enjoy it as your creations. For all these things I give thanks for it is so. Aho, mitakuyasa, ahani. Thank you. And I'll just go with the water myself. Thank you for touching this. You can go on. That's okay. We'll, we'll wait. <laughs> Hazel's going to bless the water in the river. Thank you so much, Hazel. For anyone that hasn't already seen them, you can see that we have cliff ruins all the way that are visible all the way around this site. So it's really meaningful to have you here to share that with us today. And now I would like to introduce our mayor, Doug Mongosik, who we've given three hours and 45 minutes to talk about this site. <laughs> what? I thought you gave me four. <laughs> mayor. Well, three hours wouldn't begin to be enough time for how I feel about what's going on here today. I, I, this is just a dream come true for me and for the town of Clarkdale, I think for the Verde Valley and all of you people who love this river the way I do and have uh, all my life really. Uh, I was uh, went through high school in Prescott and I spent all of my summers right here, right on this spot. And between Perkinsville and Camp Verde, uh, hunting on the river, hiking on the river, fishing, birding. Uh, so this means a tremendous amount to me personally and I'm I'm so proud that the town of Clarkdale and the Verde Valley has embraced this project and helped all of us uh, realize this dream come true. Isn't this a, a spectacularly beautiful spot? I mean you just never want to leave when you're here. I, I never want to leave and in fact I seldom do leave it seems like I'm here. <laughs> 
about half of my time. This park's a dream come true for so many of the people uh, who love the Verde, Valley, uh, Verde River like we all do. It's a dream come true for the river itself, a river that is life abounding, this lush green riparian ribbon who nurtured the Sanawa a thousand years ago and continues to nurture the people of the Verde Valley uh, today. This park is dedicated to that river. I'm getting choked up. <laughs> to teaching, recreating, birding, sitting quietly, listening to the ripples and rapids and feeling the cool water under our feet and watching the seasons change. It's dedicated to bringing the wonders of the Verde into the lives of the people who live around it. It's dedicated to thrilling children with tadpoles and dragonflies and turtles and mud squishing through their toes. It's dedicated to dogs who love to chase sticks and great blue herons and yellow-billed cuckoos who inhabit the banks and eat from its pantry. This park is dedicated to the people of Clarkdale and the people of the Verde Valley so they can kayak and swim and watch birds and hike and love a river. Look up in the cliffs around us and you'll see cliff dwellings. There's a great big one right behind that tree that you'll see when you stand up. Another really beautiful one right over here. These dwellings were built by the Sanawa, people whose lives depended on this Verde River and our lives depend on it today too. This park is dedicated to helping us all appreciate how much this river means to us and what a tragedy it would be to lose it. A little history of what brought us here today. About three years ago in 2011, Gail and I took a trip around the town of Clarkdale and we decided that we would go pretend that we were a couple visiting Clarkdale for the first time. Maybe we came to ride the Verde Canyon Railroad. But we got there a little early and I'm a birder so I wanted to see where I could bird. And we drove around the town and uh, looked for how I could indulge my passion, birding. And we found that we could see this really wonderful strip of green trees that ran through the whole town, but we couldn't find any way to get to it. We found out in that whole discussion that the Verde River was an underperforming and unappreciated asset even in the town of Clarkdale that depends on it. But they aren't black, are they? Are we okay? All right. We concluded uh, that we needed to make the Verde River a much bigger part of the town of Clarkdale's life and the people who live in the Verde Valley's life. Uh, we began thinking uh, about how we might be able to open a park someday somewhere on the river. And the first place that we looked was just south of the slag pile in that area that is owned by, again, Freeport McMoran primarily, right at the end of Broadway, below Patio Park subdivision. We thought this would be a great place, really nice old growth trees in there, great piece of river. Uh, but it had a lot of challenges that we weren't, uh, weren't very able to overcome. And so we shifted our attention to this spot right here, primarily because it was already really heavily impacted by previous uh, uh, gravel pits and a lot of kind of uh, trespassing uh, four-wheel drives and other things that uh, compromised this stretch. We thought that if we could get this under control, we could do the river a huge favor in the people of uh, the Verde Valley at the same time. So we scheduled a date to come out and look at this with representatives from Freeport McMoran, and on that trip, uh, Duff Sorrells, who works for Freeport, said to us, you know, if you like this spot, you'll really love the spot just about a mile upstream, which we called Upper Tapco, just beyond the old Tapco smokestack, which is just upstream from us here. We went up there and thought, wow, this is, this is unbelievably beautiful. So we, we started working with Freeport McMoran, and actually at light speed, Joe Brunner and other representatives from Freeport McMoran and the town of Clarkdale working together affected a lease on that property, as Gail said, for $10 a year. We wanted $5 a year, but they stood hard on the $10. <laughs> Wouldn't budge. So here we are. So we leased that property from Freeport McMoran, and it was about 90 acres or so up there, beautiful land. We began running river trips from there all the way down to Tuzigoot. We improved the roads. We built some trails. We built a kayak put-in site. Uh, in the most advantageous place in that whole site. And then 
two local residents, Clark and Dale, decided that they were going to raise their family right there above in a tree about 40 feet above the kayak put in site. Clark and Dale are desert nesting bald eagles. And one of Clark Dale's uh, primary goals is that we're going to encourage nature and that we're going to do everything we can to make sure that the habitats are retained and maintained, especially for animals like bald eagles that have such a hard time anyway. When you have a nesting pair of desert bald eagles on your site, you can't use that site for six months out of the year. And those months are the months of December through June, which would be primary times that we would want to utilize the park. So we didn't have to think about it for more than a few seconds before we said, we've got to move. We have to move the park. We can't disturb these eagles. Uh, so we reverted then to this site down here. We got back with Freeport MacMoran. And between Gail and Joe and, and others working at Freeport MacMoran, they had that lease completely revised to this site uh, in what two weeks three weeks which I don't know if any of you have worked for governmental things before or large corporations that's light speed to get anything done in three weeks we came down we surveyed this site for eagle nests and potential eagle nests we didn't find any what we did find though was you know a spectacular 109 or 110 acres that we have here to uh, to develop so my uh, sincere undying gratitude to Freeport MacMoran for helping us make this happen. Uh, this is property this is property that hasn't been open to the public in 50 years or, or more. A long long time and uh, having it open now is, means a great deal to everybody. Then it occurred to us somewhere before that that if we had two parks we could really we could really run ourselves ragged and probably break the town budget. So we had to decide if we had two parks, we could have boats running between the two. We could even have commercial trips running here. We could have a park system with two parks that had not been duplicated anywhere in Arizona and almost nowhere else in the southwest of the United States. Two parks where people could put in upstream kayak down to the downstream location and then be shuttled back to pick up their cars, make it a wonderful, beautiful day, and at the same time create a whole economic development strategy for the town of Clarkdale that was uh, just unheard of only two years before that time. So that's what we did. Uh, we worked with Arizona State Parks um, and the Arizona State Parks Board and George Christensen and Max Castillo helped us uh, co-manage that site down at Tuzigoo to give us this two-park system with about three miles of river in between. So uh, again, so many people worked so hard and cooperated so well uh, to make this happen. I, I, I just can't overstate that. Um, so we also then uh, started talking to uh, river outfitters because the outfitters were going to be an integral part of the economic development plan. They were going to bring more people in to appreciate the river and more people to kayak on the river and they were going to form the basis for some of the um, income that a park can make. It's very, very difficult to make money on a park or even support that park financially. And so having people like Richard Lynch, who's standing back there in the blue shirt, uh, wave Richard, hi, uh, and his crew out here has just really meant a lot to us. He has embraced this wholeheartedly. He's running a whole bunch of trips every day. He's got tubes and kayaks uh, ready to rent out there every day and is running a great successful operation. He's also running the shuttle that's going back and forth between uh, these two parks every 15 minutes. So all you have to do, yeah, he is. That's what they told me, right? Wait a minute, where is he? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so you can you can park your car here, put your boat in the river, go down to Tuzigoot, and then just meet one of the shuttles and be uh, brought back. That's really an integral part of the whole way this is going to work. Uh, so I, I appreciate their efforts here. I want to talk a little bit about what the goal is of these two parks and why we've concentrated on the Verde River. You know, there's a general understanding in the Verde Valley uh, and all of the Verde Valley's leaders that 
the Verde River is fed by groundwater that's discharging from our ground. We know that we're probably depleting our groundwater in most of the Verde Valley. And when you deplete the groundwater, less water flows into the Verde River. And so for us to have uh, a vital, sustainable, healthy Verde River in the future, we know that we're going to have to get our groundwater under control. We're going to have to get better water management, better recharge plans, all kinds of things that are going to change people's lives in the end. And we knew that if we made the Verde River a bigger part of people's lives and brought it into their consciousness, uh, that they would be more willing and more prepared to make those kinds of changes that will be necessary uh, in order to save this river. And so that's one of the very big goals of the Verde River at Clarkdale Parks. Uh, the other one, of course, is economic development for the town of Clarkdale and for the whole Verde Valley. So now we have a system where people can come into the city of Cottonwood, enjoy the old town part of Cottonwood, uh, visit the Verde uh, Canyon Railroad, go to the Verde River at Clarkdale Park here at Upper Tapco, go on down to Tuzigoot River Access Point, and then spend an evening either in downtown Cottonwood or downtown Clarkdale, and just kind of have an integrated economic development uh, plan for the whole Verde Valley based on uh, this kind of string of parks and uh, recreational amenities that we have now. We know that the river's economic value is going to continue to grow as people take more and more advantage of it and more and more people will uh, hopefully drop a few bucks in Clarkdale and Cottonwood uh, because of that. I have a long list of people to thank. Uh, Gail recognized a lot of people that were here. I want to start out though with the Walton Family Foundation who funded a lot of the studies and the, the planning that went into this park um, and who encouraged uh, lots of different organizations, the Friends of the Verde River Greenway, the Verde River Basin Partnership, uh, the Verde River Institute, the Verde River Valley Nature Organization that runs, ran its first uh, river trip, um, birding trip off uh, in kayaks from this site this year in addition to the canoe trips that they've been running at Dead Horse Ranch State Park. Uh, the Verde NRCS and NRCD both were integral in helping this happen. Freeport Mac ran, as I said, without whom uh, we couldn't get anything done. Arizona State Parks and the Verde River Greenway, Max and George and the Arizona State Parks uh, Board, Yavapai County, Supervisor Davis, uh, for supporting the project, keeping that road maintained, and providing us with the adult probationers who put the fencing in that Gail mentioned. And that keeps everybody going through the right entrance and exit to the park, which is a really important part of getting control of all of this. Uh, Clarkdale's Parks and Rec Commission, who continue to work on making this a premier uh, river park. Town Manager Gail Mabry, who worked so hard to make this happen right. Uh, I know she stays up all night just thinking about how this park's going to go, because I get emails first thing in the morning about uh, what we could do and what the possibilities are, and wouldn't it be great if we did this or that. And to have a, a manager and a staff who's as dedicated to something like this as the council and the people are is really a treat. Um, Wayne Dabrowski and his town crew, Art and Tim and Elpedio and Chris and, and uh, Kevin and all of those people who poured concrete and put in signs and built roads and installed all the amenities that uh, will be coming and are here in the park now. Clarkdale Town Council, Vice Mayor Richard Daynert with us here today, Councilman Kurt Bohall, Bill Regner, Rennie Radasia, who unwaveringly supported this project and understood its importance to the community. And then a whole cohort of people who helped groom the river and clean it up. We ran, I don't know how many trips. Where's Marsha? Marsha, Mar there's Marsha. Marsha Fouts, first of all, who put these things together, it was one of the real driving influences behind making sure that this river was a safe, easy, fun place to boat. And we went out and we rolled rocks, and we rolled rocks, and we rolled rocks. Uh, Marsha, Chris Jensen, Martin, the hurricane, where's Martin? There's Martin Ball sitting right there. We call him the hurricane because the guy works like 16 other people. You tell Martin, you know, this tree that's fallen down needs to move. It's gone in 15 minutes, and you don't know what happened to it. Uh, Bill Regner, Becky O'Banion, Deb LaFrance, Gail Mabry, Bob Rothrock, Bradley Gimmel, Jim Quinn, Matt Chavis, Phyllis Webb, Hugh Taylor, Ron Condon, 
Bill Perino and his scout troops, the Mingus High School wrestling team, Chief Randy Taylor and his crews, and Richard Lynch and all of the Verde Adventure Tours people uh, helped us clean up the river and make sure that it was a safe and enjoyable trip. Then there were more than 70 people, many of you are here today, who helped us on an all-day uh, forum to find out what people wanted to see in these parks, how they could be operated, what could make them sustainable, and how we could continue to make these premier river parks uh, forever. And then finally, all the people on whose shoulders we're standing today, all of the river advocates, people like John Parsons, Chip Davis, Bob Rothrock, Chip Norton, sitting here today with us, Dexter Allen, and so many more who built the foundation that all river advocates are standing on today. These people were dedicated to this river and working on this river 25 years ago. Everything we do today is because of the things that they started, and we owe them a huge debt of gratitude, and so does this river. Marsha, do you have anything you want to add to uh, any of this? While we... Marsha Fouts, river lover extraordinaire. I just wanted to say there was a survey uh, three years ago that said that people really didn't care about the river, and that's why this is such an important moment. We've seen so many more boats coming through town. Haven't you guys noticed that? And people are ready to be here. They're ready to get out. They're ready to enjoy. I'm up here to represent, um, Doug has mentioned several of the people that have volunteered. It's been, actually, John started 30 years ago getting yeah. this going, mm -hmm. getting gravel mining out of here, uh, introducing people to the river. And we're, we have, um, with Bob's organization and Chip's organization, we've been putting people on the river for nearly 30 years. And now we're going to have more people on the river per day than we put on in a whole year. And it's just going to be just absolutely amazing. So this is so exciting. Thank you so much Thanks, for getting Marcia. this together. If you had three marshes, you wouldn't need most of the rest of us around here. If you had three marshes and one gale, you're set. And a Martin. And a Martin, and a Martin ball. <laughs> the hurricane. Um, you know, I could obviously go on and on. I would love to do that. I know you guys have other things to do with the day. So I want to introduce to you Robert Quintinar from Freeport McMoran, who's going to say a few words about Freeport's uh, participation here. Robert, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Freeport McMoran, I'd like to express our appreciation of being invited to this opening, the grand opening of the lower Tapco River access point. So congratulations to all of you. I'm, I'm here in place of Joe Bruner, who was not able to attend, unfortunately. Uh, he had another commitment on the East Coast but he did ask me to pass on his congratulations to all of you for this very significant accomplishment. Uh, in fact, all of us that have been involved uh, on this project at, from Freeport uh, applaud the mayor, Ms. Mabry, Ms. Filardo, on your tireless efforts to visualize or accomplish this, this, uh, this uh, uh, vision of yours. Um, over the last few years. Um, we are happy to have played a small role in granting the access to this, this uh, location. Uh, we believe that with granting this access, both residents and visitors alike can now safely enjoy this uh, unique river uh, ecosystem that is the uh, Verde River. Um, I don't have a lot more to say except congratulations again. Thanks for the opportunity to be here and good luck on growing this sustainable resource in the future. Thank you so much. I have one, just a couple more things to share, and then we're going to do a ribbon cutting. So 
So Marsha actually mentioned um, some of the history, and I wanted to go back just a little bit. She shared with me some of the way back history, and she mentioned John, John Parsons, who back in the early 80s, I believe, was working with the Forest Service and established the first river access points here in the Verde Valley, and then transitioned to work with the NRCD to start doing the first kayaking, canoeing tours for dignitaries, two of whom were Senators Kyle and McCain back in those early days. So he started doing that. We've continued that here in Clarkdale. The mayor and I do some of those trips now. Actually, we do them about once a month to try to get people, influential people on the river to make them understand what we're trying to do here. A um, couple other people I wanted to recognize is Dan Campbell, who went back when he was the state director of the Nature Conservancy, was really instrumental. I think he was the one that took the walk with Governor Bruce Babbitt um, along the river near what is now Dead Horse Ranch State Park. And the dream of Dead Horse and the Verde River Greenway came to life at that time. Um, and in fact, I found this quote that Bruce Babbitt shared, and I thought it was really apropos today. This was back in 1988. It was the second year of the Verde River, Verde River Days. So the Verde River Greenway was in its infancy, but Verde River Days had kicked off. And this is what Governor Bruce Babbitt said, who is considered the father of the Verde River Greenway on that day. Protection of the river represents the most important task for local leaders in the years to come. We still have a chance here in the Verde Valley. That chance is gone on the San Pedro, the Gila, and much of the Salt River. It's not enough to have a state park. It's not enough to have a riparian corridor. What we have to do now is work to protect the Verde River from start to finish. So I'm really pleased to be here today, after that was said in 1988, to continue that vision. We have a lot more work to do in the Verde Valley. But it's been going on for a long time, and we're really happy to be a part of it and continue that today. Um, I think that's all I'll share for right now. What I would invite is for all of you to be part. We want to have a really big photo op for our ribbon cutting. We're going to have to move into the sun. We're going to move down, walking towards where the canoes are down there. I'm going to lead the way so I can tell you where to stand. And I'd like our elected officials that are here with us along with Max and George and Hazel and Robert to kind of be up at the front where we're going to do the ribbon cutting and then I'm going to position you all so that you can be part of the photo. We're going to spread you out enough that we should be able to get everyone. So come on down. <laughs> 